countdown to 25 days of Christmas is on. Yes! And the biggest adventure. Countdown to 25 days of Christmas. What's going on guys? Now look, I'm sorry I didn't get around to making more videos. I, I had exams, okay? I'm in college. I had exams. So, now they're over. Now we get to dive into more movies. Let's go. So, the next one, Home Alone 2. Why is this movie on the list? Because this is kind of where the Home Alone franchise just went a little bit down. <clears throat> so why is this? on my all-time favorite Christmas movie list. Because of one reason, and one reason alone, it's in New York City. New York City, at Christmas time, okay, if anyone's been there, or if anyone lives there, you know for, you know, beyond anyone who visited, so, I visited, and New York City, at Christmas time, is a character in of itself, man. I mean, the entire city decks the halls, if you will, and just goes all out Christmas, man. You got the gigantic Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. You've got the plaza, okay? Which, by the way, Donald Trump makes a cameo. All you people who are Donald Trump supporters, he makes a cameo here. All those who don't, I would advise staying away from this movie, especially since the election. Yeah, now I'm gonna get into politics. Let's move on. So, yeah, Home Alone 2, is it a complete rehash of Home Alone? Yes. Is it kind of a commercial for that little talking thing that's kind of like, it's like a cassette recorder that you can fast forward and go slow and all that. Is it a commercial for that? Yes. Does Macaulay Culkin kind of act the way you think of Macaulay Culkin would act? Where he's like a, a um, endorsement, I guess. He's kind of like just doing it for the money. Yeah. He does in this movie, but he doesn't do it quite that much, I would say. It's kind of the cool Macaulay Culkin where he's got a little bit still where he's kind of vested, but he's still kind of like on the edge of being a um, endorsement moneymaker and all that. New York, I mean, despite what John Hughes would do, I mean, he John Hughes has made great movies, okay? But after Home Alone, he kind of started to shift to the crappy family movies. And he did a little bit here, but he made New York City very, very much a character as it is at Christmas time. And not only that, but he shows like the bad elements of New York as well, you know? New York at night is scary and it's not really that Christmassy but yeah he doesn't slack off as much in this movie and another thing you might want to note is every character in this movie is electrified like for instance when the mother finds out that Kevin's in New York or whatever Kevin's not there she Instead of saying, Kevin, you know, it's like just shouting. She screams. She blows it out, man. She just, if you have your volume on high, it's going to hurt your ears, man. Even if you don't have your volume up high, it's going to hurt your ears because she just belts it out. Kevin's more, you know, cocky, you know, even though he's trying to, even though he's still learning the same lesson, more or less. He's, I don't know, it just, I don't know why I like it, I like, I guess I like the electrifiedness of it, the fact that every character is electrified, every character is more on edge, I guess, every character is like, 
has more um, cartoony effects to it. I don't know. I guess I like the cartoons. And plus, Marvin... Plus, the two robbers are still there. And um, even they're electrified, literally and figuratively. Could these traps at the end of Home Alone 2... Because they're at the end of every Home Alone. I mean, that's what that's what makes a Home Alone movie a Home Alone movie. Do the traps seem like they could kill them? Yes. I mean, I would be very, very surprised if any of them lived. If a person was actually put through all this crap. But, again, it's more cartoony. It's still got the same cast, which makes it a little bit better than Home Alone 3, which didn't have the cast or characters at all, and Home Alone 4, which was complete crap, and then Home Alone The Holiday Heist, which was not even worth mentioning. I mean, it's a little bit better than Home Alone 4, but still, man, I mean, no. Otherwise, yeah, it's kind of a guilty pleasure for me. Home Alone 2... I tend to like better than Home Alone, but comparison to how I like it and the goodness of it, like the credibility and all that, yeah, man, it's, it's, um, I guess it's a guilty pleasure. And that's why it's that high, this high on the list. Oh, and also, Tim Curry's in this movie, and he just puts everything into this role. How short of a role he has in this movie, he gives it his all, man. And I mean, the scene with him and, um, that little movie, you know, he kind of has that little, you know, uh, Kevin's got that little movie that he plays to get the, get adults to do what he wants, I guess. It kind of like represents the father and all that. I forget what the movie's called, but it's like this old black and white movie and all that. That scene between Tim Curry and the movie... That is beautiful, man. I dare say it's even better than in the first Home Alone. Because of the cartoony. Because of the over-exaggeration of it. So yeah, Home Alone 2.